Thank you. OK. Uh, this is the core implementations uh, weekly sync, um, December 2nd, 2019. Uh, we are now recording. OK. Uh, to start off with, uh, upcoming and shipped releases. Uh, Alan, do you have any updates? Well, yes, I do. <laughs> Uh, just earlier today, we shipped the JS IBFS 040 release. Uh, a lot of good stuff in there, including a new migration tool. I have told people about this many times. Please go and read the blog post. Uh, it is linked in the notes. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, and Alex released a bug fix for 039, um, which stopped people from accessing their repo. Uh, so that is now fixed as well uh, earlier today. <coughs> OK, uh, testing infra process. Uh, do we have anyone? I guess I can give this update. Uh, at the moment, the test ground daemon um, is currently in progress. The test ground daemon is a uh, sort of like a side daemon uh, that controls the test infrastructure. Uh, the idea here is that we can integrate this daemon with uh, like uh, test ground and with like uh, AWS and with GitHub, and then you can just like instruct the name of GitHub, say like, hey, uh, I want to, yeah, you just add some GitHub bot, say, hey, I want to test this thing. Uh, the GitHub name with, or sorry, this test ground name would be responsible for receiving this certification and spinning up a test run. Um, uh, we also still have uh, work on like uh, network controls in progress um, and a bunch of cleanups. I'm not sure what the state of uh, the uh, UI is. Uh, Enrique, have you been working on that? I'm not entirely sure. No, I don't okay. know anything about it. Uh, Jim, do you have any additional updates? Um, I, I'm going to be starting working on some um, connectivity tests. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure what we're doing with the UI stuff. So I think we'll discuss that on Tuesday tomorrow. OK. Are the two things, Stephen, that um, needed to exist in order to start writing DHT tests merged in? To the test ground, if I remember correctly, uh, it was being able to have different no. versions and being able to do network. Not yet, no. Do we have an okay. owner for those that's not you? Uh, no. Um, uh, we need an owner for uh, multiple versions. Uh, the the um, uh, network controls are like almost there, uh, but last week was hectic with holidays. Yes, Alan. What does multiple versions mean? Multiple versions of Go IPFS? Multiple versions of GoPFS, like potentially like versions of Go and JavaScript, although I don't know if that's that important in this case, to lack of THC support. Um, but yeah, the basic idea is being able to run multiple containers at the same time. This requires some design discussion, unfortunately. We think we know how to do this, but like, it's not trivial. And it probably will get hampered out. So we have some same time, which should be coming up very soon. Okay. Uh, subdomain gateway. Uh, uh, just, uh, just, just a super quick update. No updates from me personally, but uh, with uh, the latest JSIPFS release that Alan mentioned, uh, we now have uh, support for base32 uh, identifiers on the IPNS paths. That includes both uh, CIDV0 converted to CIDV1 with like DAG PB multicolec and the one with the proper uh, lib 2 um, Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think it'd go as well. Uh, see, PRD tracking issue. Yeah, in case anyone's interested in the progress of this. That's the tracking issue. A uh, bunch of random PRs. Yeah. OK. Next up, distributed signaling. That is still on hold, but hopefully it'll start again soon. OK. Uh, IPNS. 
Uh, Rin. Yeah, so I went another round at the um, sort of IPNS value store uh, PR. So that's ready for review. And uh, Hugo and I did some talking uh, in Costa Rica about the IPNS over DNS spec, what want that to look like. Um, I'm currently assuming this is lower priority, uh, but if we want to at least make landing the spec a higher priority, um, that's cool too, um, but need, need some feedback there. Do you know anything I missed? No. Nope. Uh, high performance. Uh, yeah, so working on okay. various PRs to make our data stores support asynchronous writes, which will in turn uh, make our stuff a lot faster. Um, there are a whole bunch of PRs there. There have been some discoveries along the way, like some like level DB was asynchronous the whole time if you were using it, which might explain some of the performance differences, um, and just sort of updating our tests and removing GX and the various data stores as I'm crawling through them. Uh, I just have to do FlatFS is the only one left, so should hopefully get this done soon. Um, so I've opened PRs for um, paralyzing uh, the import of files into JSIPFS. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's it's kind of like it's really good it's got about 50 percent faster which is amazing um so it parallelizes in two places like the first the first one is like so you have a you have a file pipeline and so the file comes in we chunk it um we write it into the data store and we will create a dag and and, then, and write it into the data store and then we create the tree structure of of the directory that we're importing um so previously that all just kind of went in one go uh so now we can parallelize on the file import so a stream of files comes in and we can fan out on the files uh, and then the when we start chunking we can also fan out for each individual file on the chunks and then we we fan back in where we start writing the, the tree the final directory tree um, the reason that we have these two different points at which we fan out is so that if we're importing um one like we're importing lots of small files that typically they're smaller than the chunk size so if the file is under 256 kilobytes there's no point trying to fan out a chunking because there's only ever one chunk so you want to be able to fan out at the file level so you can process lots of files um, of one chunk or you know, small amount of chunks each um, conversely if you've got one file that's enormous then you want to you want to fan out at the chunking stage and not at the file stage so there's two um new pr parameters that are exposed that you control that that chunking behavior um, and for doing like lots of small files it's basically 50 percent faster um, and for doing one file that's big it's also 50 percent faster and the flip side of course is that you can also make it slower by uh having not enough chunk that's pretty cool um, anyone got any questions about that Do you have some stats? Yes, uh, they're on the issue. I can kind of link it. Oh yeah, I see. I see. I didn't see that you replied to my question before. Yeah. They're in the pull request. If people are interested. Okay. That's awesome. Next up, we had swap updates. Or sorry, no, migration to multi-hash keys. Uh, Alan, do you have any updates here or was it blocked on? That is um, on hold currently. I'm not going to have okay. time this quarter to look at it. Okay. Yeah, we had swap updates. Dirk. Hey, yeah, uh, it's uh, currently blocked on test ground and getting some reviews done, but expecting some good progress this week because we're going we're gonna to meet up and work to be on it. Okay. Uh, async await refactor. I guess we can start with yes. the I'll kick it off. JSMTV, uh, yeah, so we've got SecIOs done and integrated. Um, we're at the point right now where we're just working on uh, libpdb core. So we've finished up a lot of the internal um, 
module refactors, circuit relay, DHT, peer and content routing are converted over. We're currently working on switching over the the dialer, which is Q-based, into a token-based dialer um, so that we can fix the per-peer parallelization of dials, because uh, currently that's all serial. So working on getting that out. Um, and then Bashko is working on upgrading the PDP daemon and interop tests um, so we can verify that's all working before we do a pre-release, which we are targeting for this week. Uh, once we have the pre-release of libpdp, we'll start integrating that into JS IPFS and then start working all of the issues that come up there. Does anybody have any questions? Dirk. Yeah, I'm just wondering about the, uh, the token dialer. Is that something that would be useful uh, for Go IPFS or Go libpdp as well? So Go libpdp does use like a token-based dialer, but they do it based on like file descriptors. Uh, but like JavaScript, we do, in the browser, we don't have file descriptors, so ours are kind of like arbitrary, um, but it's a similar system. And that is it. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any design proposals or anything like that? They want to come I think the JS HTTP client is next. Oh. Sorry, I was just Sorry. laying the tracks. Um, the JS EFS HTTP client, um, I've got a pull request open um, to quickly explain it. It removes node streams and pull streams in favor of async iterables as per hopefully everywhere in libptp and, and, and all that. It removes callbacks and um, it removes peer info and peer ID um, uh, dependencies in favor of just sending back objects with um, CIDs. Uh, which removes a whole swathe of crypto libraries that are basically not used in the client. Um, and so now, um, now this bundle size is 92.7K uh, down from 246K. So um, that's a significant saving, uh, but it's still huge. So still work to do. Um, but uh, that PR is not finished yet, but that will hopefully become the new API that's used once I, it will, um, it depends on the interface IPFS core um, changes that I'm doing to um, to bubble up the async iterators into the APIs and remove the um, add pull stream, add readable stream in favor of just async iterables. Um, and all the docs will be in there and sorted as well. And once once we have the HTTP client and the interface tests all sorted, then um, then we can just do the same to JS IPFS um, and hopefully we'll see um, some good size improvements there. And that will hopefully coincide really nicely with lib JS libptp, which is being pre-released as we got to kind of speak. So things are going well at the moment. Okay, awesome. Uh, now we need to sign a few proposals. I think we've gotten through most of those so far. So, uh, Blockers asks, we have two. Yeah, I ah, just, yes. um, uh, I had, last week I did put JS IBFS had relicensed to MIT and Apache 2. Um, if you haven't already, then please go and visit the sign off issue. Um, in between then and now, uh, another pull request was submitted to the HTTP client to do the same thing. If your name is on that issue, then also please check it out and um, tick it or um, copy and paste the um, sign off message. Um, so this is just to, to uh, swap the license to MIT or Apache, uh, uh, just so that people can choose at their leisure. Um, and it means that we no longer require sign off on, on commits and things like that. And it's, uh, it follows suit with what Go IPFS did uh, a while ago and is also um, the same licensing scheme that's in use by Filecoin. So. Uh, please have a look and sign off on those if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Okay, questions. Someone has a question on level DB. Ah, uh, it's a different library. So I'm guessing the answer to this is it depends. Yeah, I just want to know what we're doing and making sure that like if we copied what we were doing in Go in exactly into JS that we didn't also copy the wrong things. I think the answer is yeah, we're using a completely different library, so it's a completely different problem. Okay. Um, parking lot. 
Any discussions? Okay, then I think that covers it for this week. Please fill out your uh, async disc or, um, async updates, uh, and then I will PR the script pad to the notes later. See you all. Have a good week. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.